own conversation. When Zuma was questioned about that in Parliament, he said, did he mention my name? No. Why don't you ask him? Let him tell you who or go and ask the Guptas. You know, so you, you have a lot of people who have said uh, um, their own encounters with uh, uh, the Guptas. And then uh, we, we, we had a recent report as well when the, the Minister for uh, Cooperative Governance, that is um, Jess Van Rooyen, who said that, who, who they claimed that he visited prior to him being uh, uh, appointed the Finance Minister for just about four days, that he visited the Guptas for about seven days. You know, now he's reinstated his uh, objection to that report being released as well, applying for an interdict, which he withdrew after uh, Chili Madonzela stepped down. So there's so many things going on, um, and people are quite disappointed. We haven't really heard anything from the Guptas themselves, apart from denying the allegations at the initial stage when they were made. Have they said anything about this in recent times? They have denied. They have continued to deny, and and they're saying because uh, there was a business meeting, like a business briefing, where one of the Guptas, I think Ajay Gupta, uh, who who said all these things are allegations. Have I been called in to be questioned? No. Uh, so they're speaking their words that um, they're they they they're not guilty of all these accusations. But of course, we know that uh, the president himself admitted that. Their business associates, they're his friends, and their business associates of his son, Divizane, who has been mentioned in all these. Um, so they're sticking with their word that uh, they, they're not guilty of anything, but uh, that is uh, out to be proved. Let's go to uh, the Mandela Foundation, which gave that uh, report earlier today, calling for uh, President Jacob Zuma to call down because they said he had failed. Um, what does that mean? Well, uh, put simply, what they mean, or let me just quote the statement where they said, we have seen a crippling of critical institutions like SARS, which is the South Africa Revenue Service, and the NPA, that's the National Prosecution Authority, which, by the way, back to back, two days in a row, have dropped charges of cases that, you know, have been making headlines. And that doesn't really um, go down well for these institutions. And the Nelson Mandela Foundation said that... Um, this is, is happening due to political meddling for personal interest. Um, so it, they're just echoing uh, the sentiments of quite a number of heavyweights. Since we talk about weight, the number of heavyweights, including um, Vivonia Trialist, some of the survivors uh, who went to trial with Mandela and went to Robben Island, like Dennis Goldberg, who said, look, ANC is not listening to us, so we're going to go public and we're calling for Zuma to do the right thing. Uh, in their words, and, and, and leave the office. I know the president uh, faces, has been facing a lot of uh, calls for him to quit uh, the people, different uh, labor organizations, and so on. But now, coming from the Mandela Foundation, how much weight will this place on him uh, now that uh, he has refused to even respond to any of the calls for him to step down? I guess it, it carries as much weight as the as every concerned um, every concerned South African citizen. Because we have a lot of groups, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, the, the, the veterans, ANC veterans, and you have divisions within the ANC as well, because the, the party, which is the ruling party, is not speaking with one voice. In how things, they're more or less saying, look, I think it's time for us to have a change. We heard Winnie Mandela saying, look, we need to relook and, and refresh the leadership of the party, uh, whatever that means, you know. Uh, so a lot of big weight, including the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the surviving Livonia tri trialists as well, calling for the president to, to step down. And um, the president uh, is supposed to be in Zimbabwe visiting uh, President Robert Mugabe at the moment. So the, the nation, and tomorrow we expect a march as yeah. well against mm -hmm. this capture. Do we, do we know the groups that will be participating in the march? Uh, uh, we have the DA, the EFF, of course. Uh, we have a, a opposition group and civil society group, opposition political parties. Of course, we expect COPE as well. Um, and maybe some hidden ANC members as well. We don't, we don't know. But we know that the opposition parties, as well as many civil mm -hmm. society groups, will be converging on Pretoria as a seat of government tomorrow. Betty, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you.
has come to West Africa. Now, Ghana's Electoral Commission is headed to the Supreme Court to overturn a high court decision that allowed one of its candidates, uh, one of the candidates in the December presidential election, that he disqualified from the race to resubmit his nomination papers. The candidate, Papa Kwesi Ndwom, is from the Progressive People's Party. He had been stopped from running following a problem with his nomination papers. Meanwhile, three other disqualified candidates are also challenging the decision of the Electoral Commission to disqualify them. The Commission has been hit with multiple lawsuits after disqualifying 12 presidential candidates. The elections, the general elections in Ghana come up uh, a month after the U.S. elections, which is December 7th. El Sudan's problems may be complicated even further following an extension of sanctions announced by the United States. And if that bites even further, the U.S. has decided to extend already existing sanctions because, according to President Barack Obama, the actions and policies of the government continue to pose an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. Sudan, of course, has been embroiled in an internal conflict with its neighbor, South Sudan. Thousands of people have been displaced. Millions more have also been left the country and are taking camp outside of Sudan. Egypt's Prime Minister Halimiram de Salen has dropped or moved several of his key allies in cabinet, including the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Finance. Uh, changes can be seen as part of the reforms which the government says are aimed at addressing public grievances. The cabinet reshuffle comes as the country is under a state of emergency following nearly a year of anti-government protests from two of its biggest ethnic communities. The new look cabinet includes a mix of the old guard, new faces and renowned academics. The removal of Foreign Minister Tedros Adhanom came as no surprise. He has been endorsed by the continent of, to run for the leadership of the World Health Organization. His replacement is the deputy leader of the Oromo People's Democratic Organization, which is part of the ruling coalition. Still ahead on Network Africa. We'll look at the economy in sub-Saharan Africa. We'll be right back. <laughs>